Number seven from the PERT practice test, it just asks me to simplify this big, long anaconda. This is a pretty long problem. And a lot of people say the PERT does that. It gives you these really long expressions, and it just wants you to know how to simplify them. Well, first off, I notice there's no symbol in front of this parenthesis, and there's no exponent up there. So I really don't need these parentheses for this first quantity or this first expression. The plus sign, I really don't need these parentheses for this expression either. But there's that negative symbol, that minus sign. And when you have a minus in front of the parentheses, that's that big mistake that a lot of people make. They forget to distribute that negative across the quantity. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ignore the parentheses for the first two quantities and then distribute the negative across the final quantity. That's going to give me a negative 2z squared plus 3, no parentheses needed, plus sign, 4z minus 7, again, don't need those parentheses. Now, I can eliminate these parentheses by distributing that negative, or negative 1. So that's going to give me negative 6z squared minus z. Uh-oh, a negative times a negative. That's going to give me plus 9. Now, once I'm at this stage of the game, I'm going to CLT. Combine like terms. So I need to see if there's anything like negative 2z squared. Well, negative 6z squared has the same exponent for the variable. So that's going to give me negative 8z squared. Now I need to see if there's anything like 4z. Well, let me see. What's like 4z? Well, minus z. So 4z Minus 1z, that's going to give me plus 3z. Now I'm going to see if there's anything like the digits. The digit 3. There's 3 minus 7. Well, 3 minus 7, that's negative 4, plus 9. I'm going to set it up. Negative 4 plus 9, that's going to give me 5. So my final answer for this one should be negative 8z squared plus 3z plus 5. And nothing else will combine. So let's see if that matches up with any of our multiple choice selections for number 7. Negative 8z squared plus 3z plus 5. It lines right up with choice A. Number 8. On the PERT practice, it says factor completely. And this looks like a pretty short and sweet problem. But that x to the fourth power is the, the trick. That's the one that's going to be the pitfall for this one. So what I'd like to do first is pull an 8, a GCF, out of this. And to me, it looks like the GCF, the greatest common factor, is going to be an 8. So I'm going to divide each term by an 8 the GCF, and I'm going to put an 8 out in front of a quantity, and this will tell me what the binomial will be left over inside. So 8m to the 4th divided by 8, that just gives me m to the 4th. The minus sign falls down, and 8 divided by 8, that gives me a plain old 1. Now notice, you can check this if you go ahead and distribute that 8 across the quantity, 8 times m to the 4th, gives me back to the original 8m to the 4th, and 8 times 1 gets me back to the original 8. I'm not done. I'm not done. m to the 4th minus 1 is a difference of two perfect squares. So what you need to ask yourself now is what times what equals m to the 4th? So this difference of two perfect squares, difference meaning mi minus sign or negative, and two perfect squares, m to the fourth and one, are both considered perfect squares. So m to the second times m to the second, or m squared times m squared, that equals m to the fourth. And one times one, that equals one. 
The signs are going to alternate because that's what always happens with the difference of two perfect squares. The signs go ahead and alternate. So one's going to be plus and one's going to be minus. Let's not forget about our 8 out in front. So a lot of people think that we're done. And if you look at the multiple choice section, well, I could have been done there. But I went a little bit further, and now I have that. I could be done there, choice B. No, it doesn't work like that. The directions say to factor completely. So if you can continue the factor, keep factoring. And I notice that I, again, have a difference of two perfect squares. There's the minus. There's a perfect square. There's a perfect square. This here is prime. You can't factor a sum of two perfect squares. You just can't do it. Over here, we can beat this up a little bit further, though. So I'm going to factor m squared minus 1. So what times what equals m squared? That's going to be m times m. That equals m squared. And then what times what equals 1? Well, 1 times 1 equals 1. And then the signs are going to alternate when it's a difference of two perfect squares. And now I just copy stuff down. So I'm going to copy this m squared plus 1 down. And I'm going to copy down the 8. And let me see if anything lines up with that. Because right now, I'm stuck. I cannot factor this any further. I hope that I factored it completely. And let's see. And there it is. My choice C lines up. Notice the m minus 1 is over here for me, and the m plus 1 is there for me, but that doesn't matter. That's commutative property. It's allowed.